everyone for today's skill breakdown. It's actually going to be sort of a double feature for Sir Lanvil and Sir Brunor as they have the exact same skill tree. Anything I go over for one uh, applies to the other. I would say if you're trying to pick between the two, if you are doing a tyrant run, Sir Brunor is obviously the better pick as he has tyrant alignment, whereas Sir Lanvil is neutral, but Sir Lanvil does also have the restless trait that makes it so he loses loyalty if he doesn't go on a mission, but he does level up faster in the training ground. I usually kick him, but it's up to your personal choice and preferences, I suppose. Now both of these champions have what I like to call the basic skill tree for champions as they are the most sort of generic out of them. Starting in tier 1 we have the strike attack, the same ability for all of them, for AP, 100% damage, and the upgrades coming on this as we've seen before is open wounds so it applies bleeding, strong grip for an extra 15% weapon damage, Reeling Blow for 20% Vulnerability debuff, and the most important one being Glory Kill. You reduce your cooldowns when you get a kill with the Strike Attack. Both of these champions carry a Defensive as their next active skill, actually called Defensive Stance. They gain 16 armor for one turn, with this amount of armor scaling up depending on their hero level. The first upgrade grants them 30% physical debuff resistance through the Perseverance upgrade. Resting Stance also grants them 30 temporary HP. Next is Steadiness. Incoming armor loss is reduced by 50%, so it really helps this extra 16 armor just get a lot more hits absorbed by it. And then Active Defense, reduce the cooldown by 1. Next we have Cleave, 75%, 3 tile wide, 4 AP. Bleeder, it causes bleed. A severing Blow, so the center target, takes an extra 20% damage. Momentum, 15% flat damage, to the entire attack, and then hack and slash for knockback. Then of course we have the ever important rage for the stacking damage buffs for every single kill. At base it's 10% for two turns. With the upgrade this increases to 15% on extended rage. Can increase to three turns with anger management. Get an AP back per kill with bloodlust, and then get some HP back per kill with blood rage. Then we have Juggernaut for 5% cumulative weapon damage for each towel you move. This is useful because every bit helps. The standard champions don't have any form of mobility move, so generally they're not, not going to be moving very far with this ability compared to like Lancelot or the Black Knight. So the damage buffs on this usually won't be quite as high. Extra bleeding for an extra 50% weapon damage on bleed effects. And then lastly, strength for 10% more weapon damage. Going into tier 2, we have power attack. Deal 150% weapon damage with plus 15% armor breaking. In the first upgrade, reduce the cost of the move by 1 with ready to purge. Cause a 30% vulnerability debuff with the vulnerability upgrade. With initiator, plus 25% weapon damage if the target is at full HP and full vitality. And finally, stunning blow. The cost is increased by 1 AP, but now stuns. This last upgrade, as I've mentioned before, I think is sort of a judgment call. If you have no stuns, this may be useful for going against bosses, but generally you won't get a whole lot of use out of this against standard enemies, as anyone that gets hit by this is probably dead that turn. And with Initiator comboing with the super high armor break, you're going to be deleting huge chunks of armor off this, and if you're taking vulnerability, any follow-up attack is going to do 30% more damage against them. This is just an overall very strong single target move. I think one of the best in the game. Next we have their important ranged move, Earthshaker. 120% weapon damage to a unit and everything along this path. It is a line attack. It can't be blocked, and it does go through obstacles. The first upgrade, Magnitude, causes knockback. Second is Ground Surge for plus 15% weapon damage to this move. Very important, as well as this next one, Earth Splitter, increase the range by 2. And then Stumble, the target is slowed by 1. This one I could see probably being kind of useful, but the only two that I consistently take is Ground Surge and Earth Splitter. 
the other two don't really help with damage much, and that tends to be my focus when I'm building my champions. Next, we have Vengeance. When an enemy hits the hero, the hero gains 10% weapon damage against that enemy until the end of the encounter. This is nice because this also applies for like archers if they ping off at your champion and your champion doesn't get a chance to get to them. You know, for a turn or two, this damage buff will remain the entire time. There's no time limit on it. And this upgrade does really help contribute to the champion's new playstyle having to be a bit more precise with their movements due to the fact that they can't get absurd AP per kill from gear. A lot of these upgrades have to do with having less health, so it's sort of a high risk, high reward kind of playstyle. I personally just don't use a lot of these as it's as this sort of high risk playstyle doesn't really seem warranted most of the time. The first is Berserk. The hero gains plus two AP if they have no HP. This one upgrade though is a pretty easy take, very easy to trigger without taking a lot of damage. Avenger, the hero starts their turn with plus one AP if they received at least two hits during the enemy turn. That's super easy to set up. Frenzy, the less HP the hero has, the more damage they deal, with the maximum being 30% weapon damage at zero HP. And then Combat Fever, the hero gains plus four unbreakable armor while they have no HP. I've said this again, a lot of these unbreakable armor talents, I just don't really see that useful unless you're taking a bunch of them on all of your heroes to stack them and apply them to other heroes in the party. Otherwise, the armor is just so little by the time you reach the later parts of the game, it's so minimal. I mean, the th these two at least are very strong. I haven't bothered trying this kind of playstyle. I just haven't really seen a need for it or a reason to. But if that appeals to you, I mean, they're strong upgrades. Last, we have Armorer for that one less AP reduction off of heavy armor sigils. This is a must. And Robust, 10% vitality, HP, and physical debuff resist. For the last active skill, we have Whirlwind. But overall, it's a pretty solid skill. It deals 120% weapon damage to all adjacent units, so it does have high hit potential. can get a lot of different targets for 5 AP. The first upgrade, Bleeding Wounds. It causes bleed. Knockback, it now causes knockback. Raging Wind, plus 15% damage. And then Bladestorm, reduce the AP cost by 1. This is what brings it down to 5. Six is really expensive, and I mean, five is still pretty expensive, but I think much more reasonable. If you're going to be using this move, I think the first upgrade you should take is definitely the AP cost reduction. Next, we have two familiar passives, very important, very powerful for the champion. Damage focus, stacking weapon damage buff for passing a turn or for any leftover AP, 5% at base with the upgrade of save strength, it becomes 8%. Then with the first upgrade of save strength, you get extra AP to carry over into your next turn, plus one for every three that you save. Readiness, gain four armor per three unspent AP. At level 25, this becomes five armor. This skill is very good for either passing your first turn and making sure you take minimal damage, or even in the middle of combat. If you're surrounded by a bunch of dudes, you don't think you can kill them, you're worried the champion's going to take a bunch of hits, just pass the turn. Get a shit ton of armor, and you're going to be fine on your next turn, 9 times out of 10. Just try and face your back away from as many of them as possible. And this last one, Focused Watch. I pretty much never use Overwatch on my champions by the time I reach Tier 3. So AP spent on Overwatch counts as unspent for the purpose of damage focus skill. This is useful, so you can end your turn with Overwatch instead of just passing. But a lot of the time, I'm passing because my champions are out of reach of an overwatch on a potential enemy. Or in the case where I'm doing it next to enemies, if I use the overwatch, then I will get less armor on the next turn. So it's diminishing my defensive play. And there's just better uses for the skill point to go elsewhere to increase the champion's damage. Melee Expertise for some Unbreakable Armor and some Debuff Resist for adjacent enemies. The Unbreakable Armor aspect of this is kind of whatever. The Debuff Resist is alright, you know, try and mitigate your turn getting mitigated. But the main reason for this ability, as I've covered before, is Killing Spree. This ability is insane. It can just infinitely chain kills, theoretically, if there's enough weakened enemies around you. For example, you use Whirlwind weakens four enemies around you, kills one of them, and then you'll just killing spree for free the next three. But I mean, the most common cases, you'll just kill one enemy, get a free swing, hit another enemy. 
a lot of the time kill them. If not, I mean, now you only have to do one attack to kill them instead of two. It's just a huge AP saver all around no matter how this gets worked in. Following upgrades, some of these are actually fairly useful. Combat Specialist plus 5% weapon damage for each adjacent enemy while outnumbered. Separate the champion a little bit from the party. Pretty easy to stack this up. Key to the battle. While outnumbered, the hero starts their turn with plus 1 AP for each adjacent enemy above 2. This usually doesn't turn into a whole lot of bonus AP, so I think it's better to put the skill points somewhere else. If you have extra skill points lying around, this isn't a bad pick. And then Overdrive, all cooldowns reduced by one turn if the hero starts their turn outnumbered. This is fairly useful, a bit hit or miss, because a lot of the time, with the way it goes with the champion, is they'll get a bunch of kills on their second turn, and enemies generally haven't reached a point where they've reached them, so you haven't used any abilities yet to get cooldown reduction on. And then following into the third turn, there's so few enemies left, usually, that this doesn't get a whole lot of use, I've found. In fights where, you know, enemies are getting summoned in, or you're fighting against waves of enemy, this will probably get some good use, but outside of those cases, this ability comes a little niche. Lastly is extra stun, 50% efficiency for stun and slow effects. If you're taking the stun on Power Strike, this may be useful and may be worth it. Two skill points for it is a bit of a high ask in my opinion, so I end up not taking it a lot. But it does make your stun very effective against resistant enemies. Harden armor, reduce armor loss by 20%. This is just a solid defensive. A lot of people were worried about archers picking off champions. This really helps with that. And then extra area damage, just 20% weapon damage to area skills. That is a lot of what champions do. Through Warwind, Earthshaker, Cleave. This is a very solid pick for them. So that covers the skill trees for Sir Lanvil and Sir Brunor. Not a whole lot of super interesting or unique things about them, but I mean, any champion is honestly a good champion, and they're both capable of doing some pretty good damage. I mean, they have rage, and that's the main thing, that plus damage focus. I mean, certainly solid. I hope this was helpful, and thanks for watching.